Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video I'm going to show you this mass storage device I came up when I was playing with redstone mechanics. So, as you may know, most mass storage devices with redstone are done with things like piston tape. And there's nothing wrong with that, but the thing about piston tapes is, while they're good at storing a lot of information in a small amount of space, they're kind of laggy. Well, not kind of laggy, they're really laggy. They're a little bit complicated to set up and build, and probably most importantly, they're really, really slow. If you can get access times under 30 seconds with a piston tape memory, you're doing really good. They're, they're slow. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. And that sort of makes mass storage with current resto mechanics generally not practical. But what I have here doesn't have any of those problems. It's really simple to set up, it's pretty much lag-free, and it is, at least in mass storage terms, really, really fast. So let's take a look at what this thing is and how it works, and hopefully you'll get an idea of how you can use this. If Yeah. Alright, so first thing you need to understand about this design is it works in serial. It takes in one byte of information, not bit, byte, in serial, and it outputs one byte of information in serial. So you have to work in serial if you want to use this memory. Now I don't have a serial encoder on hand, so I'm just going to put in random information just to demonstrate. But if you wanted to use this thing normally, what you'd do is you'd send a pulse into this one tick before you started sending information in. And that lets the device know that, hey, you're about to send some more information into the cell. And yeah, so I'm just going to hit the button and flip the lever up and down randomly and see what gets saved, because, again, I don't have a serial encoder with me. So apparently I saved 11001100, so interesting pattern to have saved, but hey, I'll go with it. And yeah, if you want to read the information back out, you hit the same button. I'll hit it on the side so that you can see the information being read back out, so yeah. As you can see, it just read an on-off two-tick pulse like I input, so yeah. And the information is still there to be read back out again, so I can read it out again. And yeah. Now how does this work exactly? Well, the way this works is, as you can see, it's done with a repeater lock chain. And what happens is, once you send information in, information comes in, and it will lock once you send all the information in. Now once you read information out, it'll do the exact same thing. It'll move this piston out of the way, and information will start streaming out. Now that does sort of get rid of the information, so what happens is the information also travels back into the input. So that way the information will all be back into the position for when the repeaters lock again. So that way you can keep reading the information out over and over and over, and the information will just stay there forever because it keeps going back into the repeater loop. So yeah, and that's the way this thing works. It's really small and ends up being really fast at the end of the day. So, yeah. And if you want to re erase all the information in and reset it, I have this lever that does that. If you flip it, it'll just extend this piston to block everything off when it goes back. So that way when it tries to go back, it can't. And it just disappears forever. And you can reset it at the same time you're sending new information in, so that's sort of, I guess, a performance hint if you want to use this design for something. But yeah, it's pretty simple. I'm sure you can figure out your own designs for this. It's not that hard. And it's a really good way to save information in really large quantities. So how exactly does this thing perform in terms of a mass storage device? Well, in terms of mass storage, this thing obviously, it's not the smallest thing in the world. It's not going to be nearly as small as piston tape memory or anything like that. So you won't be getting absolute smallest per block per bit ratio. But the sort of redeeming quality for that, although it has nearly doubled a well-designed piston tape memory in terms of blocks per bit, this thing is fast. If I was to take up a typical RDF plot and just fill the floor of this and stack it five layers high, just for sake of example, that would get me about eight, a little under eight kilobytes, not bits, again, bytes, of redstone memory. So that's a lot of memory. But here's the thing. Normally, if I was doing piston tape memory, 
that would be ridiculously slow. It would be maybe 500 ticks if I was doing it well designed. But if I was using this design, I could read from any arbitrary location, and in the absolute worst case, assuming I was reading from an optimal location, I would still be able to get the entire serial signal down to as in the last bit will arrive before this time, all the information in under five seconds, even in this huge eight kilobyte array. So this thing is ridiculously fast for mass storage. It is fast enough that you could use this as random access memory in a computer. So yeah, it's a really cool concept, and I'm hoping to build some better designs later on. So hopefully they're more tileable and hopefully a little bit smaller than this. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this thing goes and to see some really awesome mass memory storage based on this sort of concept. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.